Now, I saw a video on this the other day, and I really, it got to me, right? I wanted to go over the Call of Duty Prestige system that we used to have, right? I have not been playing Call of Duty that often, but I know I played Modern Warfare 2019 a lot for a while, way back when, in like, a, you know, about a year or two ago. And playing multiplayer, playing Warzone, wh whatever. And I realized that it was just a very empty shell of a system now. And by by that, I mean, we there's no reason to not prestige. Now, to be fair, there is no prestige system really anymore. It's just like a, you know, a leveling system for the people that want to see some kind of progression, right? The golden age of Call of Duty was Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, that era, right? And the prestige systems that were put in place there were for the big boys, okay? And the people that didn't prestige, we looked down on those people. Now, that was... But it was funny, right? There, there was people that were working and they had a life and they couldn't just do everything and then just get, you know... Get, go back to zero and have nothing. I'll explain the system in just in just a minute. But essentially, the system in place was you went through your normal general prestige. So what, there wasn't actual prestige. You just went through your normal ranks. You got to a five-star general, and then you could prestige to prestige one. And you could, you could prestige all the way up to 10. Some, there are other Call of Duties that were up to 11 or 12. Then it was like 15. Then it was like 20. Then there was like a Master Prestige or whatever the hell it was. So th that that was where it started to get a little hazy once they started to do like the over the over 10 prestiges. I think over 15 was the one where they kind of started to get a little hazy. And on the goals, essentially, of the prestige sy system. So... They had prestige tokens. They had things to pretty much unlock er everything in a, in an instant. And not there was no consequence really. There there was obviously in in a lot of different places, uh, in in a lot of the different games. The one prestige token on your first prestige would mean that you you were guaranteed one thing, right? But if you prestige ten times, your like all your favorite guns that you had by then, or a camo or whatever, you could just keep. You didn't have to, there was no, there was no like sacrifice. So the very first prestige systems that were put in place were essentially this. You got from level one to the five star general and then you'd prestige, but you would lose everything prior to that. So you lost gun camos, you lost guns, you lost all your progression, all, all challenges, which was actually a good thing. Because the challenges could be redone, which means you could rank up even faster if you just went after challenges while you were trying to rank up. So if you did search and destroy and you got like the car bomber one and you got 10 kills with your submachine gun. And if you did like the easy shit and you got like all these, all this extra XP it was so easy to rank up from like 1 to 10 or 1 to 20 or whatever. It started to get hard after like the fit level fit level like 50 to 55, which is the top rank, at least I think in Modern Warfare, the first one. Um... And then the second one, I think it was similar. It was like 55 or 60 or something like that. It's been a while. I don't really remember, to be honest. But essentially, you went through those prestiges and you had to choose, right? You had to choose to either prestige or and lose all your stuff or stay the rank and get mutilated by your friends, right? <laughs> those are the two choices. And some people chose getting mutilated by their friends and they just, because they just didn't want to give up the all the progress that that they did. Well, there was other people that wanted to grind and get from get get from level one no prestige to level ten prestige or twelve or fifteen or whatever, right? And that was the that was the that separated the boys from the men. That prestige system, the old prestige system. This new prestige system is just it's not even a prestige system. It's it's like a it's just a progression with symbols that's all it is so the old prestige system it's it had status it had it, it had a meaning to it like i was i was able to go now to like my mother and say no i'm just kidding but 
you were you were able to go to your friends and or your friends wouldn't be on for like a day or two or three or a week or whatever they would come on to you being like a third prestige when they were like a like a first prestige right so that was a that that was a status symbol of you and your friends like dude come on you've been playing so much get a life yada 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 like you guys mess you break each other's balls and whatever else but at the end of the day i think that it was a healthy thing to have in the game not only did, did it kind of it, it went with competition but it also in the early stages anyway in the early days it created uh like a, a team of i don't want to beat these guys or i don't, don't want to face these guys right um but then as the as the days went on 10 10th prestiges eighth prestiges like all these higher prestige people didn't really seem that intimidating because of the mods and the way that people were able to just like mod their way to, 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 to the top. So somebody that actually is a 10th prestige in the game with like a, whatever KD, a two or three KD, you know, like they were definitely not that good if they cheated or whatever. But this, this, you know, when the game first came out the first few months of it, before all the mods, you know, I'd say about a year before all the mods started happening and everything like, like that, the game was, you know, it's like I you see a team of tenth prestige, or you see like one tenth prestige on a team. You're like, shit, like this could be a bad game for us. You know, it's 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 an it's it's a intimidating symbol, right? There's a principle behind it. There's an intimidating symbol against seeing a a gold cross tenth prestige person in Call of Duty Four. Versus now, you're just like, oh, go touch grass. Like, there's no respect in it anymore either. That's the other thing too. Now it's like, if you are good at a game, go touch grass. It's not like, holy shit, I want to friend request this guy. Or, holy shit, I want this guy on my team. It's like, go touch grass. You have no life. You know? Even though it's like, I've seen so many video clips of people saying that to somebody else. And you're like, dude, you play this game eight hours a day on stream. You got, you've got no life either. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, that's the other thing too. Is, is like, there's no respect behind these, these status symbols any, any, anymore. And that's... That's the problem behind it. That's the that's the real issue here that I'm trying to get everyone to kind of un understand here. And I and I the, the old, there's another there's another agenda that that I have here. Not like agenda, but essentially I want the old prestige system back where you had to sacrifice to get what you wanted. You you couldn't just use a prestige token or the symbol would just change, but like nothing else changed. Like your, your challenges would not reset or don't reset. Now your gun challenges don't reset your, uh, your, all your attachments don't reset. Like none of that stuff resets. So essentially there is no consequence to you getting to you prestiging in, in, in this game. And it even happens automatically. Like I remember I was playing model for 2019 and I, during the season, I think it was like the season past times or whatever. I was sitting here and I'm like, oh, I'm almost, I'm almost ready to prestige. And I was like, and then all of a sudden I played a game and my, my thing changed like in the lobby. I was like, it prestiged me. I was like, what the fuck? And I realized that there was no actual thing that you could sit there and like hit the button to prestige. It just does it for you. So if you hit level, let's say 55 or a hundred or whatever, it now prestiges you to level to like to prestige one. And then either it changes to a one or you just get to like, le like level 101 or whatever. I'm pretty sure now it's like levels. You just go up to like a thousand or whatever the high. I'm pretty sure a thousand is the highest still. So it's like you go through a thousand levels. So it's like you now you're at like a different symbol, but you're at level 101, right? And I was like, really? I was like, there's no sacrifice in that. It just changes everything. I kept all my camos. I kept all my guns. I kept all my attachments. I kept all, I kept everything. The, 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 um, uh, the, what the hell is it called? The challenges didn't even reset. So it's like, now I don't even have that to like rank up even faster. So it's like, I don't know. I, I just, I find it to be very silly that they do that kind of stuff. Now, that was the reason why I love the old prestige system was because it, it showed not only status, but it actually gave you like a sense of what you, like it had, you had to make a hard decision. Like, in Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare, you had to make a hard decision on whether you wanted to proceed and lose all your stuff or not. And then it's like, once they get into the into the position of, oh yeah, here's a prestige token, it's like the first prestige token doesn't really mean that much, right? Because you can just, 
use it on a gun or whatever on our like if there's a meta obviously you're going to use it on, on that meta right so use it on, on on that meta but i don't see a reason why after like i five prestige 10 times i'm pretty sure there was like 15 to 20 prestiges when they first and when, when they first introduced that so and I, I i also think it was limited to what you could use it on like you couldn't use it on a perk in a couple of the games, you could use it on, like, guns, essentially. And I'm pretty sure, like, attachments. So, it's, like, if you wanted to keep, like, a red dot for, like, your, you know, your the meta weapon, you could do that, right? So, that that was the, that that was, like, the era of just, like, a muddy mess that, like, kind of just dislodged or dislocated the whole reason why the prestige system was, was introduced. And I get why they did it. I get it. Because people were probably complaining, I don't want to start over again. Blah, blah, blah. But it's like, I also had more time on my hands back then. So I also like now, if they probably did that, I probably wouldn't be prestiging that often. Or, I mean, I wouldn't be worried about ranking up guns or whatever else, because I have other shit to do with my life, not just play vi video games. But at the end of the day, I, you know, it really, them doing that really stopped the whole reason of prestiging. But they, because I guarantee you the last call of duty that they put in place for prestiging, I guarantee you most of their player base probably didn't prestige, which is why they came out with, with the system that they have now is because I guarantee you, I guarantee you that it was, um, they pretty much probably did this. They looked at the numbers of the people that were prestiging in their, in their fan base or in their player base. And it was probably a lot less than what it was five years ago or at that time. So then they were just like, you know what? We'll just prestige people automatically and just have them go to level a thousand each season. So now it's like, now they have like a system in there where you can take a look at your season. So that's also an introduction of like the, of Warzone of battle Royales because apex does this too, where they show you what season and how high you've, you got in that season. So like season one, I was like a level 200 season two. I was like a 700, you know, like and so on and so forth. Right. So now that's like the status symbol. And I, and I get things, times change and stuff like that, but the system that they had in place was a real, was a good system to like keep competitiveness up against not only friends, but also just in general, you know, it, the status symbol of being a prestige master or of being a 10th prestige in call of Duty four meant something. Obviously with mods, like, like I said before that it kind of diminished it just a little bit, but it's still at the end of the day, if you had a 10th prestige, people already were kind of like, Oh shit, I do. I may have to go in here using my strongest gun, or I may have to go in here using the, the gun that I'm strongest with. Not like an M 14 with like no attachments. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's the kind of, that's the thing that kind of happened there. And there's most certainly there's nothing wrong with that. I'm, uh, I, Ooh, excuse me. I'm I'm so I'm so glad that we were able to evolve the system, but I also miss that old system because it just it just felt so right and it felt like it really meshed well with Call of Duty and the image that they were trying to portray of the military shooter. Like you have to be you have to be willing to sacrifice things. That's really what it was, is is you had to sacrifice your time to get the symbol. Versus now you can just buy the symbol. And that's how Battlefield used to be too, but then you were able just to buy things. So, and what, what I mean by that, for those of you that haven't played ba Battlefield, and for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, Battlefield, for the longest time, you had to pretty much run through every class and earn up to a certain point of what that class had to offer. So, like, the prepare tool, or if it had, like, an ammo box versus an ammo crate. Uh, ammo crates gave you more, gave people more ammo and they were, you know, you weren't able just to put it to one person. You were able to give it to like everyone in like an area, a small area or whatever. So, um, but then they made it so that you could buy through those classes and you could just buy all the, all the stuff. So you could be like a level, essentially if it took you, let's say, uh, 55 levels to make that, and it took you like a week to do you or like, let's say a month you could buy that for like 50 bucks and you would be already be, you wouldn't be like a level 55, but you would have all the stuff already. Like I remember getting killed by a level six, but he had like the sniper class with like all the good shit on it. And I was like, he just bought all that stuff. You, meanwhile here, I'm the jackass here fucking using my time to, to, you know, to, to play 
to get these classes all the way ranked up with all the stuff. And this 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 jackass has spent fifty dollars and he got all the stuff for free. Not not for free, but without using any of his time. So there's a trade off there. Now, and I personally think that it really diminishes the whole point of the game. The whole point of video games in general is to use time to get things. And the thing is, is like, if it's more rewarding, it's not so, it's not so dopamine hit heavy when you have to earn something with your time. So a simple example I could make is the guy, I don't know his name. I forgot the streamer. You could look him up if you want to. There is a guy that did Dark Souls and did it without... So essentially, he had to complete Dark Souls without getting hit once. And he finally did it after like, I don't know, a month or something like that or a couple months or whatever. So the time that he had to spend to, that he had to, spend to do that, to finish, to beat the whole game, you can't buy that. Like you can't, if there's a, let's say if there's an emblem for, for that, right? If there's an emblem in Dark Souls for that, you can't buy that emblem. I don't even know if there's even anything for that. I think it's just like a status symbol for him on like Twitch or whatever. But if there's an emblem to get that, you can't buy that emblem. Same thing in Apex, getting like a like a like 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 a four like a four thousand bomb, a a, a four a four K, right? So you're getting a four K four K damage. You can't buy that emblem. You have to earn that emblem. So that, that's kind of like, I like how some games are still incorporating that stuff where you still have to earn them. Essentially, you can't just buy them, but there should be more of that versus less of that is my point where like, you shouldn't be able to just play the game and then your, your guy automatically prestiges. That just seems silly to me. Cause it's like, then there's, there's no sacrifice for the guns that you've earned. Now, some of you may say, why is there a sacrifice? Good point. Maybe there shouldn't be. But there's really no right or wrong answer here. It's just a matter of like, I think games were meant to be fun. And I think that we've we've essentially come full circle now at this point. So we are <clears throat> we are focusing more on it as a job of getting all these things instead of focusing on having fun and actually doing the thing that was originally intended. Now, going back to what I said before, I think that what I just said, what I just said a second ago is the, is the main thing. So you are essentially trying to use it as a job. You're trying to use Call of Duty as a job instead of actually being able to prestige and go through and get the ranks and the symbols. So instead of prestiging and losing all my stuff, why would I do that when I could when I could have all the gold camos or whatever else and just be a general fi a five star gen general on, on this at the current moment? You know what I mean? So that that's kind of the that's kind of the sense of what I'm getting from whenever I play these games now. Or it's more of a dopamine hit. Like you can buy these things, you can get this right now, get it right now, get it, get it, get it. Same, it's it's the same thing with mobile games. You 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 just you you spend money and you get it right now, and. That's not what video games were meant to be. They were meant to be fun, not only that, but they were also meant to be challenging. And when you just put a paywall on everything, it's not challenging. And eventually that's going to get boring too because human nature is always looking for something challenging. As much as you don't want to believe that, you want to challenge. Like you don't want to just have to buy something or have something just handed to you because eventually unless you have all the money in the world, you're not going to want to spend money anymore and then you're going to be like, "Well, I don't I don't want to have to earn this." You know what I mean? I could just spend money to, to get it. Why would I want to er earn it using my time or whatever? Like there's, there's a trade off for everything. And I want everyone to understand that you're, you are, you may right now may not understand this, but eventually it's going to, it's going to click in your head, especially after he hearing this, this podcast, because you don't realize it yet, but you need a challenge to be able to want to do things fr from now on. That's why whenever, if people are at a job that they hate, they stay there because every day it challenges their fucking, their, their mentality, like their mindset. And it may, it's not a good thing. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but that's something that it's always a different stress day for, for, for them. It's actually easier to stay there and to take the shit than it is for you to go out and find another job. But, but the thing is like our brains can't fathom that our brains cannot fathom being able to go out and get another job and just get out of this hellhole. <clears throat> and I was like that for a while, but then I finally realized I'm like, I control my, my life. So the whole point of this is like <clears throat> me being able to make the decision of prestiging and losing all my stuff 
is a challenge, which is what my body needs, which is what my mind needs. Now, the flip side of that coin is why would you do that? Well, essentially, why would you want to not get to level, get to level, let's say, let's say 10, let's say 10th prestige level 55. Let's say 10th prestige is the highest. Why would you want to get to level 55, 10th prestige? And any time before that, why would you want to get your gun camos? Why would I want to prestige and focus on getting gun camos or doing challenges when they're just going to reset every single time? Don't. Focus on that. Focus on ranking up. Focus on getting the most points. That's why I used to play Search and Destroy. Search and Destroy, I used to get five to six, if not even more kills per game, per round. Or, sorry, per game. Right? On the high end, it was like 25, and I would wipe the team like three times. Right? So, that's the thing, too. It's like, people don't understand. It's like, why would you focus on camos and whatever else when you're just going to proceed to level 10 and lose everything each time? What you do is you focus on, on ranking up the, the fastest way possible without cheating, without cheating. And then what you do is after that, you make your way to, once you get the 10th prestige level one, now you start focusing on not only challenges, but also trying to get camos or whatever else and attachments or whatever else. But see, the problem with that system is that it's an outdated system. I, I feel like, so this, this, this is the, this is the other side of the argument, right? That I'm, I'm feeling people are probably going to have like, Having the old prestige system is, is 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 outdated. Because back then there was only one attachment, right? You can only put one attachment on, on a gun. You can only put, let's say, like well, five camos on a gun. Uh yeah, like five camos, right? I don't think there was that many camos. There was like probably five, six camos you could put on a gun. Maybe. In like Mono Warfare and Mono Warfare 2. It's been a while since since, since I played those, but yeah, like maybe ten camos max. So it's an obsolete type of system because of the system that they've built in place right right now because of the the gunsmith because of all the attachments because of all the guns because of all the all the camos like i mean in my for 2019 there was like what 30 something camos on, on a gun that you, that, you could, that you could put on a gun granted they were all the same camos throughout the entire thing but like there was like 30 plus camos now you could put on a gun so like that's a lot of shit to get you know what i mean so you know, if you accidentally get gold for something while you're like in prestige five, it's like, oh shit, am I going to want to prestige? But that, that was also the trade off too. Sometimes I would get a camo. I'd get blue tiger camo for something for a gun that I'd just been using the entire time. I, I was trying to just rank up fast to prestige that I was like, wow, do I actually want to prestige now? Should I prestige? Do I want the symbol or do I want to just get everything gold? Right. I'm at like fifth prestige now or eighth prestige or whatever. I'm like, I want to get to 10, but I'm like, oh shit, I just got Blue Tiger for these two guns. Now I have to redo and get all that, get, and get Blue Tiger again. But it was just simple, get, it was simple back then get, getting Blue Tiger. Blue Tiger was like, what, 100, 100 headshots or whatever, or 50 headshots or something like that? Now it's like, you gotta like, you, you gotta use the attachment from one gun, then you gotta use the red dot from a different gun, then you gotta use a different gun for, uh, for a certain amount of games, get kills in smoke with an LMG, uh, throw smoke at somebody, jump off the building, get a knife kill. Like it's, it's just all this crazy shit just to get, you know, what, what, whatever. So like if you got blue, if you got blue tiger camo by accident in these games or, or close to it, it's like, why the fuck would I ever want to prestige when this is going to take me forever if I'm trying to actually focus on it and do it. So th that's the trade off too, that a lot of people don't really, don't really like, like to kind of talk about. So, but at the end of the day, I, I think, it, I think it is an outdated system but it was just such a good system that really that really spoke to status and really, really spoke to how the game how the game felt because you couldn't buy yourself to 10th prestige there was no way to do that now with a meta weapon and $20 you can buy yourself you know at least at least one prestige in like a couple days of gameplay time you know cuz now you got the meta and now you can rank it up easier cuz it's a two shot kill so that's the trade off here the old obsolete way was the right way to play games. Was it was it, you had to earn it, and if you didn't earn it, then you know with mods or whatever, then you would get into a game. And unless you had the mod still, or unless you had unless you were shooting with with you know with aimbot or whatever, then you were probably gonna get your shit rocked. And people are like, "You suck. You're not a good 10 prestige. Why are you on my team?" You know what I mean? So, and obviously people have bad games. Don't get me wrong. And everyone's gonna have a good game, but that's that's the trade off. 
So at the end of the day, I think that they should bring back maybe this system possibly in some shape or form, but I don't know how that shape or form would be. Maybe in DMZ, maybe in something that's a little bit less, maybe even in multiplayer, if they if they separated the multiplayer system from the Warzone system. But there's also that trade-off. I kind of like being able to play zombies in Cold War to rank up my guy in you know in warzone or in whatever you know what i mean like that was that was the thing that they implemented too i could play zombies and upgrade my characters right and get like cod points and go through the season pass so th that's one of the good forms of what we have now back you know back then you couldn't do that zombies was separate or actually back then zombies didn't, didn't, didn't even have a rank but after a certain point i think it was black ops two or three Black Ops 3, I think, was really where they focused on it, where Black Ops 3 had its own, like, Prestige Master Zombies, like, rank. And then, like, you had a multiplayer rank, too. I think you even had a campaign rank on there, too. So, you had three different ranks that, you, if you wanted to work on them, you had three different ranks. Now, it's like it's all meshed into one. But there's so much more points you have to get to get to those ranks, to those top ranks, where it's like, you know, you have to still have to put a lot of game time in. But if you like a game mode over one... Over an, if you like one game mode over another in Call of Duty, you can always take, you know, take the route of playing zombies or playing multiplayer or playing Warzone only to get that rank up for everything else. Now you may not have the same stuff in all of those ga different ga game modes or the things to unlock in those certain game modes, but you definitely be able to get the battle pass and the stuff in the battle pass if you bought it when you were there, right? So. There's always a trade-off to everything, and there's always pros and cons. So I'm not trying to always look at the negatives, but I, I personally think that if they maybe brought back the multiplayer, the traditional multiplayer prestige system, I think it would definitely bring back a good sense of what Call of Duty used to be and how it feels versus now.